Oh my God, it worked. <laughs> yes, look at that. It really was just the power supply. All right, folks, we're back on this Extron scan converter repair. So if you didn't see the last video, this thing can take VGA in and turn it into composite or component or S-video out. And the problem with this thing was the original power supply inside had gone bad. And we diagnosed that in the last video. And what, I wanted, what I'm going to do is replace it with this little Pico PSU ATX power supply. So I was waiting on some parts. Those came in and we're ready. I really want to get this thing buttoned up and in the rack because definitely have some plans and they, they involve making the home lab rack look like a miniature TV station. Let's get into it. All right, so I've been waiting on a few parts that just came in and in the meantime, thinking about how I'm gonna mount this new smaller PSU in the old case. So one of my principles whenever I'm doing anything like this is to A, make no modifications to the original device if possible, and B, always make sure that it's undoable. So even if you're doing weird mods and stuff and drilling holes, uh, it should be relatively easy to undo it, even when I'm tampering with um, something like this. I might want to pull the, I might fix this someday and then pull this out and use this for something else. I might want to sell this someday or put it back to stock configuration, even though it really is just a <laughs> weird niche piece of kit. But um, I, that's how I like to do it when I'm, whenever I'm doing mods like this. So I've been thinking about how, first, first problem is like, how am I going to mount uh, this thing in here? So I've got these four mounting posts here. They're pretty much permanent. They are maybe welded or something into the case. I don't want to drill more holes. And so I started by thinking, well, I'll try to 3D print a, a flat plate. So I, I mocked it up and watched a bunch of tutorials. And this is the very first uh, 3D print thing I've ever designed. I thought, oh, a flat plate will be easy. And this was the result. So this is actually the best one I <laughs> managed to produce. It's flimsy and crappy. We got pretty far and it was going to build up to two mils, but didn't work surprisingly hard. So I'm doing something wrong there and sort of ran out of energy um, and went back to my back to my regular MO, which is go to Home Depot for something and turn it into whatever you need. <laughs> so this is a plate like you'd use to mend two pieces of wood, you know, when you're building a house. Um, and it is the right dimensions. It's three by five. I will have to drill holes for the mounts, but that's fine. We'll make sure this guy has some um, electrical tape or something, but these whole existing holes give me great spots to run zip ties through and we'll just secure that in there like that. No problem. As for the power input, this is what used to be in there. This was actually a pretty clever little thing with clips on the inside. So you push it in and it clips itself in and doesn't go anywhere. The closest I could find to 3D print was something like this. So this rolls in there like that. I'm gonna have to cut off this little ear. Um, I did manage actually to fill it in. So I'm somewhat proud of that. That's not what the print originally looked like. We'll see how it goes. So we'll do a hole there, hole there obviously. And that will allow the barrel jack to come out and mount flush onto the hole. And so that's what we'll do there. And then going back to sort of the being able to undo your modifications. This is the original wire that connected this old power supply to the board. I don't want to alter this in any way in case I want to put this back in. So I got a kit to make my own. So on Amazon, so this guy here is going to slide right into our six pin header. I'll be able to clip in whatever wires I need and connect those to the power supply. And to that end, I didn't really want to solder directly to the power supply. So I got one of these ATX extenders. So this guy clips in this way. And what I'll be able to do is cut this in half here and then just use whatever wires I need, solder them onto my other one, and we'll be good to go. So I think let's start with getting our mounting situation ready and then we'll work on these wires. All right, so that mending plate will sit in there perfectly like that, but obviously the holes won't line up. So I'm gonna need to drill four holes and I'm gonna try a trick where you take some marker and cover it pretty generously and try to move as fast as I can here. 
and then we're going to try to put the plate down on it and press. So something like that. So I'll press every corner and hopefully I will get a good enough transfer to the plate. Oh yeah, that worked out nice. I think that's fine. I'll be able to, I'll be able to drill the right holes. All right, let's get these holes drilled. So if you're drilling into a flat piece of metal like this, especially metal, it's a really good idea to punch where you want the hole first. That makes sure the drill bit stays in there and doesn't, doesn't slide or wander on you, which will guarantee to happen if you don't do this. It's a huge pain. So we're going to slam this into each corner. We'll start with a small drill bit and work our way up to the screw size we want. So you can see it puts just enough of a dent for your drill bit to sit in. All right, let's see how that turned out. Yep. That'll work just fine. Onto the power plug. Uh, yeah, I think that will work. Perfect. All right, so I think up until this point might need to be bigger. <laughs> I guarantee it. Because uh, we have to fit all this junk through the core of this. So I'll try to wallow that out. I actually didn't expect that to not be hollow. <laughs> <laughs> we could take a little bit of work. I'll be back. All right. <laughs> that wasn't fun. Uh, this is sort of what I expected to begin with. So this blasted out this piece. This was just scaffolding from the 3d print. Um, I think we'll still be okay. I need to clean it up a little bit, but basically it'll just be sitting recessed in there like that and I'll screw it on. I, I don't think that's a problem. All right. So I got that installed. It's just recessed in there and I cut that ear off. So that'll fit. Uh, it just goes in there just like that. So that'll be fine. It's not going to look, it's not going to win any awards for looks, but certainly is functional. So happy with that. And this will slide just like this seats itself in there. Now back to my sort of principles for modifications. I could screw a hole in there and bolt this down. That'd be okay. But ideally I would 3d print a piece that actually just does the right thing like the original and then also some better 3d printing for mounting the PSU, which we'll get into. And I don't know, I, I dabbled and I tried a few things for this, but this guy just isn't worth putting a ton of time into this particular thing. Uh, once I get better at 3d print modeling, then I'll come back and maybe redo this. So for now I'm going to do, you know, what everyone says you should never do. And I'll say you should never do is I'm, I'm just going to hot glue the crap out of it. It'll be easy enough to push out. Uh, it'll be strong enough in the meantime. So yeah, let me get that glued in there. Kind of hate myself for this. All right. If you're the next person that opens this thing up, I apologize. I don't know CAD well enough to do anything about this. This is strong though. That's good to go. And really not that bad to rip out. Uh, if I ever 3D print the right part, so. Okay, I undid a bunch of this loom that was here because I have to make a pretty tight angle with this guy to get in there, so I'll install that. That'll just float under the plate I'm going to put in. Uh, we'll get that done. Okay, and now I'm realizing I probably want to zip tie the PSU to this thing before I bolt it down, so Let's go ahead and get these cables created. All right, the game plan is we need six of these. Uh, I'll make a custom plug to plug into the actual main board. And then we'll just cut this little guy roughly in half so that I can use this end someday if I ever need it. And we will, of course, consult the literature from last time to make this. So. Go off and do that. I'll make sure we get some heat shrink on that. I'll come back with the finished product. All 
All right, that wasn't too bad. So before I get too excited though, I'm gonna check all my voltages against my chart. Um, this funny thing going on here, connecting these two wires, is telling the power supply to always output power. So remember, this is for a PC that would have normally had a switch connected to those wires. So it's been just set to always output power. Um, so let's see, or voltages, I should say. So the way I did it was this yellow is 12 and the whites are ground. And yep, there we get 12. And then the reds are five. So we should be seeing five volts and five volts here. And then if we go to the last one, we should be seeing negative 12, negative 11 is close enough. So perfect, this is working. I'll probably heat shrink this on here just to kind of wire control a little bit. Now we can zip tie this to my plate here and get everything mounted up. Okay, so here's the final install. And we've got this guy zip tied, a couple different directions. It's pretty, it's in there pretty solid. I just wanted it to be enough so that if I'm carrying this thing around or whatever, this isn't gonna slide. You can just barely see I've got some white electrical tape under here because I don't want these exposed contacts on the underside of the board to touch this metal plate. And then we've got our custom extender cable coming in to our custom six pin header here. So that's looking good. I'm not in love with the strain that's gonna be on this. So you can see it's already worn out just from me testing it. So the plate's gonna come like this and actually put quite a bit of pressure on that. Don't love it. Again, I could have done a lot of this, you know, I could put a lot more time into this to make the perfect part here, not use metal here, so I don't have to use tape and risk going through the tape. But, you know, for what it is, this is a 23 year old scan converter that I'm just gonna mess around with. So I think I'm really happy with this repair. It looks pretty tidy. I kind of tuck these wires under here. So I, after that voltage check, I'm feeling pretty cocky. I, th I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw the case back and all the screws on and then we'll test it and see if we're looking good. I just wanted to reiterate the build quality on this Extron stuff. So look at this groove in the top plate it actually slides into this piece right here perfectly. Like this thing is just super well built. So I bought these Williams hex set, I bought the standard and the metric. This is the standard, you know, for us Americans, I guess. And you wonder like, when am I ever gonna need this thing? Like it's so, it's so small. And sure enough, that's what fit the set key, the set screw, very, very tiny for these knobs. So yeah, it's funny how tools have a way of uh, finding use for themselves. All right, and then this might be the most important part of the mod, which is a label reminding myself what the heck this thing expects. It wants a 12 volt center positive barrel jack plug coming in because obviously nothing about this case says that uh, so that I don't mess it up in five years. All right, case back together, 30 very well machined screws later. I might be the first person to be in this guy since it was built. So again, we've got VGA coming in, composite going out. The VGA is coming from this little guy. It's just running Ubuntu on the desktop. And I can't think of a better way to test this than with this ridiculous thing. <laughs> I just picked up this panorama. I love how it says camera one, two, and then hopefully we will see three. So this guy here, the composite cable is going into port three. Let's turn it on and see what we get. Man, oh man, that's fast. Yeah, so there obviously is the Ubuntu desktop and she's on. All right, back to life. Love it. So next step for these, I'm gonna get this in the rack because right now for this demo here, these are two Raspberry Pis. I wanna have the flexibility to buy some of these cheaper little mini PCs with VGA out and use, you know, at least one of, oh, obviously I can only use one with this, but one of these to power a TV station uh, that I run through some modulators. So yeah, let's get some of this stuff racked up. All right, I think that thing is looking pretty sweet in the rack. And if you've seen my other videos, you might notice that 
these blonder tongues against my better judgment are multiplying. So I've got a channel 9, channel 13, and a channel 24. This one doesn't work at all, and both of these have a terrible hum on the audio, though they do work from video perspective. So definitely more videos coming on those. I'm actually kind of encouraged because that means hopefully I'm doing something wrong and it's just a ground issue on these, or filter capacitors. Maybe that's a common problem with these blonder tongues. I don't know. Uh, so definitely more videos coming, but you can see I have a little bit of a space issue building up. So I've kind of got the TV analog AV stuff going on down here, the servers and the actual network going on up there. And I'm running out of room because as you saw earlier, I just picked up this 3U monster. <laughs> so what I want to do is have that guy sitting here and then all the TV equipment below it. And I can see on those monitors what what's playing on each channel, which is pretty cool. So yeah, definitely more to come. Thanks a lot for following along. It's really satisfying to give this old hardware, older hardware, a new lease on life. So very excited to get that scan converter up and going in the rack. The idea is I'm gonna try to find the cheapest little tiny PC, you know, these little Lenovo Think Centers. I think Dell has a version as well, so does HP, that has VGA out. And so hopefully less than 50 bucks, I can find one of these little guys and uh, start running it in the rack and run a TV station on it. And then to that end, another big thing coming is I just picked up one of these. I've been eyeing these forever the big 3U monster. And yeah, I think it's gonna be really fun to have that in the rack and kind of host my own little mini television, television station, if you will. So yeah, that's definitely coming. But I might take a break from all this TV stuff. I need to fix all those modulators. Uh, they're not working as well as I, as I would like. And I think what's next is I picked up this guy. So check this out. A Sun Microsystem, really old server, older server, I should say. And I've got another one that's slightly newer than this. So yeah, I wanna dig into these. That's gonna be next. Look how cute this little guy is. I can like hold it up. I can't I can't hold the other one up or those, those Dell ones I've got, definitely not holding those up. So yeah, plenty more content to come. I have more projects than I kinda know what to do with, but uh, making the YouTube videos is kinda helping me stay focused. I, I finished the Extron scan converter, obviously. You're watching that. So yeah. I really appreciate all of you guys uh, watching and enjoying this and everything and subscribing. So definitely more to come and I'll see you in the next one.